In this video, we will cover the function and adaptations of the artery, vein, capillaries, as well as their arterioles, venules, and the shunt vessels. We will also mention the main blood vessels that carry blood towards and away from the heart, the lungs, the kidney, and the liver. So first of all, the structure and adaptations of the vein and the artery. You will see that I have put them next together like this, or at least I've found an image of them being put next to each other because often you would be asked to compare them. So yeah, this is to show the contrast. So firstly, the rounded thing, it is an artery. It carries blood away from the heart. It has thick and elastic walls in order to withstand the high blood pressure which it carries. It also has muscular tissues. Now this is to withstand the high blood pressure, but also it takes part in vasodilation and vasoconstriction, in thermoregulation. It also has fibrous tissues, which prevents bursting, and has a narrow lumen so that it can maintain the high blood pressure. The longer and more oval shaped one is the vein and it carries blood towards the heart. Now this one, as you can see, has a very wide lumen and this is so that it can carry a lot of blood at a time. It also has very thin walls to give it a wide lumen and has valves to, to prevent the backflow of blood. Now it is important that the artery carries blood at a very high blood pressure because you're trying to pump the oxygenated blood away from the heart to the body cells as fast as possible so that the body cells can respire. And then for the vein, you don't necessarily need the blood to be at a very high blood pressure. However, you need a lot of deoxygenated blood to be flowing back to the heart at once in order to be pumped to the lungs so that the carbon dioxide can, can be rid of, which is why it has a very wide lumen and thin walls. And as for the valves, this is to prevent the backflow of blood as mentioned before, because if you imagine blood flowing from the lowest part of your body, for example, your feet up all the way to your heart, it has to flow against gravity, so it needs valves to, to, to help prevent it from backflowing and to ensure that it flows towards the heart. Now we have the same thing but for the capillary. So the capillaries are very small blood vessels and they carry nutrients such as glucose and oxygen to body cells and it carries away waste products of metabolism, for example water and carbon dioxide. They are just very small and their walls are only one cell thick. And because the walls are very thin, this makes them very fragile. However, it allows for a shorter diffusion distance, which means that more substances can be exchanged at a time. So it has a higher diffusion rate of substances, basically. Now we have to mention the blood vessels to the heart and the lungs. So the first one is the vena cava, and this clearly takes the blood towards the heart. The next one is the pulmonary vein. Now this takes blood towards the heart as well, but it takes blood away from the lungs. The aorta simply takes blood away from the heart, and the pulmonary artery takes blood away from the heart, but towards the lungs. Next, we have the renal blood vessels, which basically just means blood vessels that go to the kidney. So this is the renal artery, which basically just brings dirty blood from the body to the kidney so that it can be cleaned. And then this is the renal vein, which brings back the cleaner blood. Next, we have the hepatic blood vessels. You will see here that I have noted the hepatic artery, although this is really not needed. It's just there because it's there. Um, so the ones you really need to know is the hepatic portal vein, which basically takes blood from the digestive system, which includes the small intestine and the large intestine, into the liver, and then the hepatic vein, which then takes blood from the liver towards the vena cava to drain back to the heart. Next, we have the shunt vessels and the venules and the arterioles. So the shunt vessels are basically blood vessels that connect an artery to a vein, and by doing this, they provide an alternative pathway for blood flow so that the blood can bypass a bed of capillaries as it flows. In the next slide, we will put up an example of this used in thermal regulation, so hopefully that will make more sense. And an arterial is simply a blood vessel that is branched from an artery. So it is basically a blood vessel that is not a capillary, but it comes from 
arteries, so it's smaller than arteries. And it plays a role in vasodilation and vasoconstriction in thermal regulation. And then we have the venules, which are formed by many capillaries coming together. And it is clearly connected to a vein because its function is to allow the oxygenated blood to flow from a bed of capillaries into the veins. So the blood flows from the capillaries through the venules into the veins. As I've said, this is a little bit of an example for one of the functions of the shunt vessels. So in the first diagram over here, this is in an environment that is cold, which is why you need little heat loss from the body. So when it is like that, arterioles become constricted so that less blood flows to the skin capillaries and also the shunt vessel dilates. So then most of the blood flows through the shunt vessel into this path rather than this path. And as you can see, it, as I've mentioned before, it is skipping this whole bed of capillaries over here. It is only taking this alternative pathway, thinking a little bit more about homeostasis the reduced flow of blood to the skin capillaries will not only reduce the amount of heat lost to the environment by radiation or conduction or convection, but it will also reduce the amount of blood flowing into the sweat glands, which means that you will not sweat as much or you will not sweat at all, which means little or no heat is being lost by evaporation of the sweat. And then in this environment is a hotter environment and arterioles then become dilated which means it's bigger like this, and then the shunt vessel then constricts, which means that less blood will be flowing through the shunt vessel, but instead it will flow through this bed of capillaries. And, uh, conversely to this diagram, this will mean that more blood flowing into the sweat glands and also more blood flowing to the skin capillaries so that more heat is lost by radiation or convection or conduction really. One of the functions of the shunt vessel is that it can dilate or constrict in order to reduce or increase the amount of blood flowing to the skin capillaries in thermal regulation. Now I want to summarize this video in several slides. So the artery carries blood away from the heart. It has a narrow lumen which helps it maintain high blood pressure inside. It has thick and elastic walls, which means that it can withstand high blood pressure. The muscular tissues play a role in vasoconstriction and vasodilation, like I've described with the arterioles. And it can also withstand high blood pressure using the muscular tissues. And the fibrous tissues will prevent it from bursting because it is carrying blood at such a high blood pressure. The next blood vessel is the vein, and it carries blood towards the heart. It has a wide lumen, which means that it can carry a lot of blood at a time, and I've explained why. It has very thin walls, which means that it would have a wider lumen. And it has valves to prevent the backflow of blood. The capillaries are very small blood vessels that carry nutrients and oxygen to body cells, and it takes away waste. The only feature you really need to know for IGCSE is that the wall of the capillary is only one cell thick. Remember, it's a one cell thick wall, not a cell wall or anything like that. Don't write a cell wall. And this very thin wall gives it a short diffusion distance so that substances can diffuse at a faster rate. And here is a table of the names of the main blood vessels you'll need to know about. Um, the blood vessel carrying blood away from the heart would be the aorta and the pulmonary artery. The blood vessel carrying it towards the heart is the vena cava and the pulmonary vein. Blood vessel that carries blood away from the lungs is the pulmonary vein. Towards the lungs is the pulmonary artery. Away from the kidney is the renal vein. Towards the kidney is the renal artery. Away from the liver is the hepatic vein and towards is the hepatic portal vein. Now of course there's the hepatic artery. However, I already said that it's not required. Next we have to summarize the shunt vessels, venules, and arterioles. The shunt vessels connect an artery to a vein in order to provide an alternative pathway for blood flow so that blood can bypass a bed of capillary and therefore they have a role in thermal regulation and they do this by dilating and constricting as I have described before. Arterioles are blood vessels that branch from bigger arteries and they also help with vasodilation and vasoconstriction due 
due to the muscle relaxations and contractions, respectively. And then we have the venules, which are capillaries that come together to form a venule. And they allow blood to flow from capillaries to the veins. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And if you've enjoyed this, please leave a like and subscribe for more. If you have any suggestions or requests, please leave them in the comments below.